Hey all, it's Bruce from Nature Calls and this is this is part of my series of beginning backpacking and this is regarding the guy lines of a tent and how to properly set those up. And I've seen some videos out there and they've got some good points but hear me out on this one. So this is a Hillebrook Acto tent and it has guy lines on it like most tents do. And in general, if you're not expecting a big wind, you want to just have your guy lines out as long as you can. That's the general, you know, if it's not going to be windy. But we need to talk about what guy lines do in reality and what the forces are involved. Now, of course, guy lines have the direct force in line with the guy line itself. But what a lot of people don't realize is that there's also a downward force that they're helping provide. And if you understand angles and tangents, you'll get what I mean. So just as these are going down to the ground, they're actually pulling the tent down onto the ground. And you do want that. And the degree is how much downward force do you want as opposed to sideways force, because that will course make your tent more stable but also if there's too much sideways force then you get in the danger um, of breaking your poles so let's try and explain how that all works and so most tent manufacturers the reputable ones they don't just slap a tent together and decide we're just going to poles in and fabric and guy lines wherever they actually put some science into it and so what we have here is we have two forces that we've got to deal with mainly. There's lots of forces, but this is a tent, old-fashioned pup tent, and we have a common one. It's kind of the wind blowing. You don't want our tent to blow over. The other force we're going to talk about is downward force, the ability to keep that tent down flat on the ground. Now people will just kind of concentrate on this this portion of it and just don't want their tent to be blown away but with the tent poles the way they're designed they aren't designed to be held in the middle and not break they're actually held they're supposed to be pulled more down at an angle so to try and explain that that concept here's a straw and if I tie a guy line on that and I've got it coming down at like an angle, you can see where it's still got some structural rigidity. If I tie it, say, anywhere along here and I pull it straight out like that, then eventually the pole is going to collapse. So that straight outward motion is not a good place to have your guy line coming straight off to the side. Or some people, I've seen some people go up to a, a trekking pole and then down. And that's, these poles aren't designed, they're, they're designed to pull on a downward motion. So I hope that kind of made some sense. And that's how the, so we have to think about the downward motion and the lateral motion. Now the way Scott and others that, I actually have a few friends that do the radio tower thing. So if you have a radio tower like this, here's the land down there. And as he explained it, if you take a guy wire and you pull it straight down, so this angle right down here is 60 degrees. And basically you've got two times the pressure going down as the pressure going this way. So if we have 40 pounds of pressure pushing this direction with a 60 degree guy line, it's actually going to be pulling that pole down to the ground at two times, so 80 pounds of downward force is being pushed down on it. So it's a whole tangent thing. So now if we bring the guy wire out to say something say more normal, anywhere from 30 to 50 degrees, come on, stick with me. two times so 
So anywhere from 30 to 50 degree angle that goes from two times downward force to one point, like one five, I think is what he said, downward force. And that is kind of ideal for guying out your tents with guy lines. If you have too much, if it's too high, if it's too high, a 60 degree, or if it's coming straight off, then you're going to risk breaking your pole. So if it's too, if it's too close, 60 degree, it's going to be pulling down on that tent pole and causing it to overstress or overstress the tent. And if it's straight out, it's not going to be really any support at all. When you look at some tents, like my Kelty tents or my MSR tents, and they don't have the guy lines directly connected to the poles like these Hillebergs do. So they're relying on the rain fly to be pulled down to the ground because they're just kind of laying on top of the, te the tent poles. They do have little Velcros that Velcro onto the tent poles, but there's not a ton of support there. So you're really looking at having that whole rain fly pulling down on that tent to hold it down to the ground. So I guess in the end, you'll look for say 45 degrees or 30 to 50 degree angle, that angle between the guy line and the ground, and you'll be good. Of course, there'll be plenty of times where you don't have that much room where you're, where you're guying it out, but if you don't have that much room, most of the time you have protection on one side of your tent, so you're not getting as much impact. So no one ever explained to me how to properly do guy lines. I hope this gives some people some ideas so they can think about it, especially if a big storm's coming up, because a tent is really to protect you in those kind of environments. All right, hope to see you out on the trail.